Hey, what's good YouTube? My name is Craig, and in this video, I'm talking about a few of the lessons I learned from some of my previous business failures and how I applied those lessons during this coronavirus pandemic to pivot and grow my current coaching business. This video will help you to see opportunity and failure, bounce back from a setback, and also learn how to transform lemons and eliminate. And by watching this video, you will finally start to understand that life is truly what you make of it. Are you ready? <laughs> All right, welcome to Business Unusual. I am Liz Whitehead and I'm here with my friend Craig Chavez. Craig, do you want hey, to- Hey Liz, how you doing? I'm good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So right now I'm a serial entrepreneur turned business coach with a personal mission to help 1 million people become the entrepreneurs of their lives. And so how I go about doing that is that I teach my clients to build scalable businesses, which are businesses that work for them instead of just creating another job that they have to succumb to. So I'm having a lot of fun now. I'm also a recently published author. Uh, my book, Burns of a Dream, just came out this past week. And um, that's a little bit about me. Congratulations on your book launch. Um, so it is, it's obviously a really odd time to be launching a book or doing any sort of business. <laughs> and so that's why we're doing this series. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, what are some challenges? I know that you've faced challenges in business before. What are some challenges you've faced before? And how did it look like this or not look like this? So I'm um, kind of looping things back to my book, uh, Burns of a Dream. It was about my journey of uh, leaving the U.S., serving in the Peace Corps in Peru, and then launching a business in that country after. And so just doing business in Latin America is a completely different animal because unlike the U.S., um, it's not a very stable environment. And our resources are very hard to come by. There's a lot of corruption that you have to deal with. So just that whole process of, of launching a business as a foreigner in an environment that is completely destabilized was an endeavor in itself. And so going through that, um, that situation really helped to train and prepare me for what's going on with this coronavirus and how that's kind of like destabilized our economy here in the United States. Yeah. How, how so? How did it prepare you for that? Well, just getting the business off the ground was extremely difficult because I was strapped for resources like people are now. So like opening up a business in Peru, um, I couldn't get access to mainstreams of capital. So for me to fund my business, I had to get creative. And I actually launched an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign where I raised a significant amount of money that allowed me to get my business off the ground. Um, also, just like there is dealing with the SBA now, there's a lot of bureaucracy when it comes to getting government assistance, government permits. And so it took a lot of time for me just to get the permits to build. It took a lot of time for me to get my permits to, to sign off on how I built a lot of my electrical systems, how I was processing my, my spirits within my distillery. And so just being used to having to deal with a lot of chaos, a lot of bureaucracy, and being uh, you know, thrown into the fire is kind of how that prepared me to deal with what's going on right now. Nice. Tell me a little, let's back up a little and tell us about your business in Peru. I always love hearing about it. I'm sorry I didn't know you then. <laughs> no. So, um, so what I was doing in Peru is that I owned one of the first craft distilleries. And so what I was distilling was a spirit called Pisco. And that's the national spirit of Peru. And so it's basically an unaged brandy made from grapes. So what I was doing was taking that neutral distillate, the Pisco, and then making my own organic craft liqueurs out of some of the fruits and spices uh, sourced from local producers. And so in less than nine months, we got four different products to market. Um, I sold a, a limoncello, um, a pineapple liqueur, a passion fruit liqueur, and this thing called chicharrada, which is basically like a Peruvian fruit punch. And it was just, an, it was just a really awesome experience that I had with that business endeavor. Yeah, that's amazing. And the, I've spent a little time in Peru for work, and I know the Peruvians are serious about what they eat and drink. So if they were, <laughs> they were drinking your stuff, it must have been really good. Definitely. I mean, uh, and, and the thing about it is just like the, the product down there was on a completely different level because the quality of the ingredients that we were using 
was completely organic, uh, non-tainted. And um, I tried to replicate what I was doing here in the United States, but I just couldn't just because the quality of the ingredients just aren't at the same level. Yeah. So what are some of the lessons you learned? You mentioned, you know, dealing with the bureaucracy, not having access to mainstream sources of capital and things like that. How did you handle that then? So one of like the main lessons I learned is that always save for a rainy day and whatever you think you need, double it or triple it. Um, Because like the money I raised for my business was completely insufficient because so many unforecasted problems occurred, whether it was different permitting processes, licensing fees, corruption, you name it, I didn't have enough money. So when I encountered some issues like outgrowing my space, um, I had difficulty in, in finding new new places that could adequately, you know, fulfill my business operations. So I say the first thing I learned is that like you have to have way more money than you think that you need. Yeah. And did you take that to heart in starting your next business? This this business that you have now? Oh, definitely. So I have multiple savings accounts now instead of just having one. But I've also too diversified my business to where like I have multiple streams of income coming in. Because with the distillery, I only had one stream of income and that was direct sales with my spirits. And so whenever that dried up, my business dried up. So now with this coaching business, I used to do a lot of in-person coaching. Well, obviously that's changed, but now I have a lot of digital products as well. So I've productized my services and that's allowed me to create different streams of revenue so that I'm not dependent on just one source of income. Yeah, that's really smart, regardless of the current crisis. Right. So um, tell us a little bit about your current business, the coaching business. Um, and how you usually do that, what you expect the outcomes to be, that kind of thing. Yeah, so how I got into business coaching was that, like, as I prefaced, I've um, been a serial entrepreneur most of my career. Like, I've owned and operated a distillery. Um, I DJed. I also had a, a fashion company. And then in, in D.C., where we met, I, I got into blockchain and uh, developing uh, different types of uh, applications. And so for me, I just realized I, I leveraged a lot of experience over my career and that I figured I could help people to avoid a lot of the mistakes that I encountered. And a lot of that information I realized was highly valuable. So basically I, I've transformed those experiences into a, a, a coaching program. And so what I to uh, practice and, and, and preach to my clientele is to build a scalable business. And so scalability to me has three main elements, um, cash flow, organization, and processes. And so when your business has cash flow, it has more income than uh, outcomes, more income than expenses. Um, The second thing is that it's organized. So you have some type of bona fide legal structure. And then with the processes, every business that has some type of automated systems that that run the business. So you're just not, you know, creating a job for yourself. And so actually, I've seen like this coronavirus has actually been kind of fortuitous because for me, it's allowed me to make my business more scalable so that I don't have to be um, dependent upon in-person engagements. So I actually pivoted to more of a virtual online platform several months ago prior to what has transpired. And so that's really helped me to expand my message and be a scalable business myself. Nice. Tell us a little bit about that because you mentioned that a couple of times, not creating a job for yourself. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about what you mean by that. So going back to my firsthand experience, so in the distillery, I was basically everything. I was doing the marketing, doing the branding, doing the product development, doing the sales. Everything was dependent upon me being there. And even though I did have some employees working for me, um, I, I struggled with letting go uh, with some of the responsibilities and, uh, and delegating uh, some work to, to them. So with that in mind, that's one of the reasons why I lost my business was because it wasn't functioning. It wasn't running on autopilot. It was dependent upon my actual physical time and energy to progress forward. So going back to what I'm doing now, it's like, okay, you really should set out um, beforehand to design a business model that works for you. And so how I start off with is first talking about founder market fit, then moving forward to problem solution fit 
then eventually getting to product market fit, but then last but most importantly is that business model fit. And so this business model is about designing some systems and processes around your product or service that you're offering. And once you actually have a bona fide business model, you have, you've created a business instead of just creating a job or a task or a hobby that you do for fun just to collect revenue. Yeah. And how have you seen that? You know, you mentioned that you're more digital now, like you had, a, you had speaking engagements and now you've pivoted to more digital. Um, how do you think that's going to impact your business going forward? And what are some of the things that you did to do that? Well, Oh, my, my bad for interrupting, but I, I, yeah, I really yeah. think it's going to going to help me out because that's one of the reasons why I wrote a book in the first place was to get like my message out to the masses. And you know better than I do, um, but when you're doing a lot of in-person uh, work, you're only limited to the to that specific moment. But for me, it's like I figured I could put my message and package it in a cheap, scalable you know, uh, product that can be sent out to the world. And so for me, by pivoting and switching to more of a virtual coaching system or coaching business, I'm able to reach people that I could never have reached before. And then furthermore, with the people that I work with, it's easier for them to advertise what I'm doing and spread the message to their client base. So it's, bas it's, it's basically quadrupled what I've been doing um, because I have an online presence now. Okay. Well, you're, and you're a pretty optimistic guy. So it doesn't surprise me that you're like, well, there's this really devastating thing happening and I figured out a way to deal with it. So <laughs> that's, that's interesting and, and it's good for people to know too, that there can be lemonade coming from these lemons that we have. Definitely. I mean, for me, that's kind of like the only way to think because I mean, we're, we're always going to suffer some type of adversity uh, as business owners or just in life in general. So for me, whenever I run into an obstacle or run into a problem, my first thought is like, how could I flip this situation uh, to my advantage? Like how can exactly, like, like you said, like how can I make lemonades out of the lemons that I'm, that I'm giving? And for me, it's, it's more of a mental game than anything. And as long as I can control what's going on in my mind, I know I can survive even if my external circumstances are kind of crashing down. Um, because I, I was told by another one of my mentors is that like our physical reality is like a manifestation of our mental reality. So as long as I can win like the, the inner game, you know, I, I'm going to be okay um, regardless of what's going on outside of me. Yeah. What are you doing to keep your mental state on track these days? So for me, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say this is an issue, but I, I can be considered a workaholic. And like for me, like I thrive off results and I thrive off progress. And so like before we were, we were talking, like I was just spending hours on LinkedIn, just connecting with people, sending out messages, letting people know about what I'm doing, how I could create value, how I can help people. And so for me, I'm just figuring out ways like how can I help others during this during what we're experiencing. So for me, it's just being proactive, not staying busy per se, but just being productive and figuring out how I can advance what I'm doing and help people along the way. So for me, that, that's what I'm doing to, to stay positive and to stay sane. Yeah, I heard from another business owner that if you have a solution people can use during this time, it's a responsibility to get that information out there and so I thought that that was a really interesting way to look at it. Um, no, I completely agree. And that's how I got into the mindset to write my book. Like I basically told myself, like if I didn't write this book, I'd be doing it injustice to the world. Like if I was gonna hold back this information, I'd be hurting people. And so for me, that little game that I played with myself allowed me to just focus and get this book out in, in less than six months. And so I definitely believe that that mentality is beneficial for you and whatever audience that you're working with. Yeah, I've, I've definitely felt that. And, uh, I, you know, in terms of myself, I'm like, oh, I have, I have stuff that's still interesting to people, you know, and as, you know, someone in the women's business owner community and the diverse business owner community, I also, people tend to send me resources. Like people are sending me grants that I'm not eligible for. And it's like, yeah, it's my job to get this out to the people that I know. Um, so that's, I, I completely get that. I love that you writing your book was like your responsibility to the world and not writing it would have been an injustice. I, I love that mindset. Um, 
One of the, so we talked a lot about how it's sort of affected your business and some of your clients' businesses on a more macro level. Like what are the things that you think might last? You know, you said you, you save more because you had that experience before. Um, what are some of the things that you think might last with, while well, recognizing this is not the new normal right now? We haven't gotten there yet. So I've, I've definitely always believed uh, in this concept called the future of work and just how like we're completely like we're fully in an Internet age right now. And with so many people working from home and leveraging technology such as Zoom, I think a lot of uh, employers are going to really assess like how many people do we actually need physically in person at that at their jobs? Like, can we digitize this? Can people uh, have more flexible options to work away from home? So, so I think more people are going to kind of um, have to, are going to have to pivot and, and work remotely or work digitally, or they may even have some of their, their physical jobs taken away by technology. So I think that's going to be a, a, a big repercussion of, of what's going on right now. Yeah. And that might mean there's a lot more entrepreneurs out there too, because they have to be. Definitely. I mean, going back to what we were talking about by not being dependent upon one source of income, um, for those people who've had their jobs furloughed or those have been laid off, like this, this might kind of plant a seed in people's minds that, hmm, maybe I should have multiple things going on for me. Maybe I just shouldn't have one main job that's going to you know, supply and uplift my life. So I definitely do agree strongly that there's going to be more side hustlers and more entrepreneurs coming out of this um, crisis that we're in. Um, because I, I don't know how true this is, but I've seen some posts online that mention several major businesses that were created during the last recession of, of 2008. I think Slack was mentioned. Like there was a couple other really unicorn startups that were supposedly created during the, this time. So I think this is a great opportunity for people to do inner work, to get uh, creative, and maybe to think about you know potentially starting a business or at least having some type of side hobby or a hustle that can bring in additional income outside of your your main job. Yeah. So doing the inner work, what's what do you mean by that? What's the inner work? So when it comes to the inner work, I think that's really like working like on yourself. Because um, I'll be doing a talk later this week about how to like stay connected during this uh, coronavirus, but then also how to position yourself for success, for success during and after the quarantine. So I kind of have like a three-step process for, for beginning that inner work. So like the first step is what I call like acceptance. And that's just like accepting that like things are different, like things are changed and like we're not going to go back to the way things used to be. And so by accepting like your current circumstances, you're going to respond instead of react. Um, because like we're we're humans, we're emotional creatures, and like when things go go wrong, like typically like we lean into our our emotions to make decisions, which may or may not be beneficial. But when it, but when you're able to accept and respond, you're able to like reframe and kind of really look at what's going on to respond in more of a logical manner. So then moving forward, the next step after adjust after accepting is to adjust. So this is where you do like the real inner work. So it's like, okay, like I've assessed what's going on with my situation. How can I adjust to pivot myself to be to position myself to be in a better uh, situation whenever this this thing uh, kind of uh, dissipates. And so for me, like I kind of ask people like, you know, what are like your skills? Like, what are the things that you're great at doing? Um, moving forward to step two, what are your passions? What are the things that you love doing? And so when you can combine what you're great at doing with what you love doing, that's going to position you in a, in a place where you can start to create value for either your employer or like create a business that's going to be in demand. And then after you've done like the adjustment and some of that inner work by doing like an inner diagnosis on who you are and what you love doing, and what you're great at doing, then you can kind of accelerate. And that's when you double down on that inner work so that you can get ahead. Uh, of the people that aren't doing that, that, that tough inner work on themselves. So that's kind of what I suggest to people when they have this abundance of free time that, w that we're blessed with right now. So I think this is a great time to do a lot of that hard work. Yeah, great, awesome. Or do you have any other last thoughts? No, it's just, I, I think this is a blessing in, in disguise. Um, it's giving a lot of people a chance to slow down because like in our American society, like we're, we're such a busy country and people are constantly working, 
constantly working, but now things have slowed down for some, it's accelerated for others. But regardless, like I think this is a prime opportunity to really think about where you don't want to be, like how do you not want to experience this again? And so the best way to do that is just to sit down and be with yourself and to really assess who you are, why you're doing what you're doing, and then figure out is that going to be beneficial in the future? And if not, uh, adjust and then accelerate. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds, you make it sound easy, but I think that's tough. It <laughs> that's is pretty tough. deep work. Yeah. yeah. It is tough, but like that's, that's where all like the magic happens. And um, that, you're, you're definitely right. Like it's, it's much easier said than done, but like you'll be so thankful that you've taken the time to do this. Um, Cause like I said, I, I like to play mental games for myself and I like to, one of the things I also like to do is like, hey, Craig, like, what can you do today that like, you'll be glad that you did in the future? And so that's kind of another way like I, I get ahead is just by thinking, like, how can I benefit from doing this work today? Because in the future, that will like pay dividends. It's like, how can I plant seeds and then water them and then you know, harvest it in the future? Yeah, great. So where can people find you? Where can they find your book? Where can they find you online? Yeah, so people could find me at my website, creativecraig.com. And you spell that C-R-E-8-I-V-E, craig.com. And then you can learn more about my book, Burdens of a Dream, at burdensofadream.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. Stay safe and healthy. In sum, life is truly what you make of it. Every one of us is going to experience various setbacks and also experience failure that could cripple us or inhibit us from actually meeting whatever goals we have set forth in our lives. But just understand that FAIL is just really an acronym for first attempt in learning. And so whenever you're trying out something new, whenever you're trying to do something that most people say you cannot, you're inevitably going to run into failures. But as long as you have a positive mindset you're focused and you believe in yourself, you're going to overcome every failure and you're going to eventually wind up achieving whatever goals you have set forth in your life, plus some. So my question for you is, how did you bounce back from failure and what were some of the lessons that you learned? Drop your comments below and let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to become the entrepreneur of your life, you can start this process today by subscribing to my channel. Also, be sure to click the notification bell to be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. Until next time.